Evo, we're live. For those of you guys who don't know what Evo is, it's worlds for fighting game community. They have a bunch of the fighting games, Street Fighter, Tekken, etc. There's an open tournament, kind of like how we did the hardcore. We did the WoW Classic Hardcore tournament where anybody could sign up. I got that idea from Evo, because I came to Evo last year and I was like, dude, having it as an open is amazing. Anybody can sign up, literally anybody can come up and arise through the ranks and end up being like the world champion. I don't know if this is true, but I heard this is supposed to be like the biggest Evo ever. We're gonna have a lot of fun. Oh, by the way, Project L, which has been announced as the name is 2XKO. They're here, I talked to uh, I talked to one of the guys at Riot, and uh, he said he's gonna hook it up and we're gonna get to play some Project L, 2XKO, sorry. Yeah. Hey, um, Sorry, I never thought it actually be you. What did you mean, man? I never thought I'd be you either. Um, obviously, I'm nobody, <laughs> but yeah. Can I get a picture? Oh, uh, sure, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Stop. I know that you've been to EVO last year and you had a good time. My name is Mark Mann. I'm the director of business development for EVO. I saw your stream and what you did last year. It was, it was really cool that you were able to connect a lot of your fans, show off, show off the show. Yeah. I've been part of EVO uh, for a long time. I was the first EVO employee and I've been going to EVO since the very first one. You were the first employee. The first full-time full hire. So I, I joined EVO officially in 2016 and I've loved fighting games for a long time. I've been every single year. So I'm happy to show you the kind of cool stuff that we have at the show. Anything, any questions you have, just let me know. Okay. I want to give you a fun tour, whatever you guys want to see. We're actually starting off in the Arcade Stick Museum. What do you use when you play? I know you're playing Street Fighter 6 right now. I do uh, Leverless. Leverless. So yeah, I use a Kitsune. You got the Kitsune, okay. Did you, you saw, you have the new Akuma one? I, I, I've had it for like... You had it early. I've had it for like four months. Yeah, Justin told me. I was like, yeah. God damn. Because Justin saw it, he was like, dude, I've never seen this. I was like, I don't know, Capcom sent it to me. <laughs> they finally just launched it yesterday. Yeah, I heard it. Because yeah. I didn't even know. Like, I saw the tweet, and I'm like, wait, I had this <laughs> this early? I thought I just like missed the announcement or something. Yeah. yeah. So I was sick. Capcom just like sent me one. Cool, yeah. Well, this is the Arcade Stick Museum. It's a nice history of different Arcade Sticks that we've had okay. at EVO. But also some new stuff that's going to be coming out. You can see in this little cabinet here. Yeah. We have the trophies that will be giving you the top three. Oh, yeah, these are sick. Oh, Eric, Eric, get phone here. So they give me some chatter. On Sunday, they have, like, the finals. And then the top three get, like, a, a bronze, silver, golden fight stick. They do, like, the modular controllers. Which was it? Was Victrix. Brand? Victrix. Yeah, Victrix. The first trophy stick for EVO was this one right here in 2010. Okay. So I used to, I, I did like most of these arcade sticks. So I used to work for Mad Cat's company. We made these arcade sticks. We made them as trophies. We used to sponsor the event. And uh, this is like, even though it's a museum, it's my collection. It's like, this is my personal collection. So I love arcade sticks. Uh, really want to showcase the community and the history of, of all the stuff that oh, the yeah. fighting game community has gone through. That's so sad. So this is like the Evo branded collection of arcade sticks. Yeah. And then you see a bit more of the retro stuff in the middle. Man, I say it all the time. The Dreamcast was so far out of its time. Oh, yeah. It was such a great system. If the Dreamcast, I, I honestly believe if the Dreamcast was released like two years later, it would have been more successful. People didn't even have internet, a lot of people. Like, they just, they just, because it had, to, I think it was like the first system by like three or four years that had like online play, internet stuff. Yeah. Uh, and everything in the package. Because PS2, PS2 came out like three years later, didn't it? No. Uh, or the in PS2 America, were, kind of later. The PS2 was earlier, I think. Oh, no, no, actually, you're right, you're right, yeah. And then Dreamcast was what, like 97 or something? I, I think it was 99. Was it 99? I think so. I think it was an odd number, that's all I Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, yeah, by like two years. Dude, I, I have to play Tekken. I still haven't played Tekken. Tekken's my favorite game. Really? Yeah, Everybody I, says, everybody's like, dude, as fan, please, you have to try Tekken. I'm like, I want to. I just haven't had the chance to even play. You have a chance. Yeah. I'm sure the chat Maybe would I'll help you. <laughs> uh, they, they would love to help. And I would probably need it more than they could have. <laughs> you know what's so good about Leverless? For people like me, like, I'm an MMO gamer. Yeah, yeah. So being able to do something that's like my muscle memory is a little bit more Your natural. muscle memory is there, yeah. So for a lot of arcade games that are used to the levers, they have to learn how to do this. But for yeah. you, it's probably natural. You know what I was using? I was using, it's like Octa Commander. Or you Commander. Or yeah, yeah. Commander. It's the little controller, the fighting game controller. And it's like a Sega Genesis controller uh -huh. and a PlayStation controller combined. Yeah. I love that thing. Because I was like, how do you play with two buttons and then they hit the bumpers for yep. heavies? Yep. I could, I, my brain just couldn't handle that. So I actually love that. I, I did that for a while and then I switched to the Leverless. But I learned Leverless in maybe like two days. Oh, that's great. That's yeah. awesome. For a lot of people, they just can't do it. Yeah. So I have I have two Kitsunes. Yeah. Kitsunes right over there. The yeah. one that you got early. I can't believe that. Yeah. I mean, Super early. That was sick. Oh, I got it. 
Did they give it to you with a nice leather box and everything, or did you get the prototype box? Oh no, I think I, I mine looked like they put like that. Like it was, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't have any of this. They they sent me one. It was like, look, I don't even know if it was real. I thought it was I thought it was counterfeit. If it didn't come from Capcom, <laughs> I thought it would be fake. Yeah, this is sick. Yeah, the thing is, I, this actually makes me play better than the other consumer. Because yeah, because the, 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 it's Dice Lumen made it artwork versus the, the sticker. Well, no, no. It's because it fuels my rage whenever I see Akuma, and I'm like, dude, freaking Akuma owns me, and I get like, I, I get like an anger buff. Like, right, a, like you got a, a special Super connection Saiyan. with the controller. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that one makes me play better than the other one. Well, who do you use? Ken. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm like a textbook like. Yeah, and right now everyone's using Akuma. Yeah. yeah. Akuma and Bipson. Yeah. Oh, dude. And both those guys just absolutely just wipe the floor. Man. It's bad. So yeah, this is pretty much Arcade Sick Museum. There's one other thing I probably wanted to show you guys. Yeah. The little Moment 37 tribute area. This is the 20th anniversary of Moment 37. The epic match between Daigo and oh, Justin. Oh, yeah. This is uh, one, it's, it's like one of the six that Daigo used in that moment. Uh -huh. uh, these are the shoes that commemorate that moment, Nike released the pair. That's so, so sick. Really cool tribute to, of course, one of the greatest EVO moments of all time. Yeah. Dude, one of the greatest gaming moments of all time. Oh, yeah. Dude, it's, dude, it's so funny. Because, like, I, I've gotten to know Justin, like, fairly well, mm -hmm. like, over, over the last couple of years. Yeah. Justin is, like, he's, le he's legit like Michael Jordan. Oh, like, yeah. But then this moment, we're like, Diger. <laughs> yeah, he got dunked on. He got dunked on. <laughs> so and funny. he'll never live it down. And he will never live it down. Yeah, people troll him with it all the yeah. time, but, you know, Justin's a great sport. Yeah. Love that guy. Well, and that's, that's the thing. It's like, so here's the thing I've noticed about the FGC versus almost any other gaming community. It's, it's both highly competitive and, like, super not toxic. Which, hey, it which, can be toxic, but, you know, there's a lot I mean, of love there. Now. Coming from me, who, like, I played, like, I was, like, a WoW PvPer, League oh, of yeah, Legends, yeah. GTA RP. <laughs> it's, like, like, comparing that to, to this, it's, like, way more mild, like, as far as the toxicity goes. But it's, so much of it is just, like, scoreboard. Yeah. And, and, like, I think that goes a long way. Yeah. So it's, like, people will, like, troll each other and stuff, and, like, people, people like, will, like, talk shit or whatever, but it's, like, it's, like, it's, like, banter. It's not, like, bad. Which I think it's cool. And it's also super welcoming. Like me yeah. coming here last year, like I was like, I have no idea. I just kind of gotten into fighting games and like with, with Street Fighter coming out. I mean, everybody plays Street Fighter as a kid. But like I, I really got into Street Fighter 6. Nice. Uh, and like actually learning like what my buttons do. <laughs> so, really learning the game, yeah? Yeah. Well, you had a good experience though. Yeah. So the important thing is to be able to have fun and just like, just, it's one of those things like fighting games, you're just able to pick it up and play it and at a moment's notice. Sure, you can get salty and stuff like that. Yeah. But you could always go back to it. It's always there. Yeah. I just hate it when they update it all the time and you gotta learn stuff new. I don't yeah. know. Do you like learning new stuff over and over? So, one of the things that is, this is why Street Fighter specifically, but like, I mean, fighting games as a whole, but from my experience, Street Fighter, why it feels so good is there is tangible development. So, like, when I learn something, like, I can see myself get better. Oh, okay. And, like, I, whenever something clicks, I'm like, oh! That's that the best sick. moment, right? Yeah, yeah, this is the Arcade Sick Museum. I want to show you the Art Museum, which is, yeah, a, it's, it's is super sick. It's, like, yeah. right around the corner. So this is a new new part of Evo. Yeah. We expanded the museum, not just the Arcade Sick Museum, but we now have the Art Museum. Oh. I want to introduce you to a good friend of mine here. Hello. This is Jay Ryu. He helped curate the, the museum here, working with a lot of the publishers and developers, even people from the community. So this artwork was given to us by a lot of the uh, publishers and developers. We have some, some original artwork, and then we also have some classic arcade posters that okay. are on the side. I think people are going nuts over it, but Sick. hundreds oh, of pieces. Too, yeah. yeah, like over a, tickets, yeah. over a hundred pieces of art here that really chronicles just like the, the games that are involved with people. So take a tour real quick? Yeah, let's do it. Awesome. So obviously, we're gonna start with... Uh... Ooh, sorry. We've got Mortal Kombat over here. Uh, oh yeah, the new Mortal Kombat's one. So this all, is this all like concept art that they had like before development? Exactly, yeah. They sent us a bunch of stuff and this is like representative of what they wanted to showcase for this year. And then we also have Undernight, which is a fan favorite, but this is the start of like the art system, uh, artwork. Okay. And this is Daisuke Sun's work. If you look at it, like a lot of people have not seen his work up close. Oh, really? And if you look at it, like these are iconic characters that a bunch of people are familiar with. Yeah. But then you get to see like his mask be up close. 
Yeah. So, it, it, like, how did that? Is this painted or is it? It's it's inked and then probably watered. Oh, okay. Or watercolor. Yeah, so I thought maybe it was like watercolor instead of clay, maybe. So we have a bunch of Arxis stuff here. I don't know anything about art. I just know what it looks. I just I remember watercolors. So <laughs> I'm not a yeah. I'm not like an expert on like the, the types, but I just I just noticed that it was like oh, let's get watercolor. Sick. It's cool. That's the thing. For Evo, this is our inaugural year of yeah. the art museum. It's the first time people get a chance to see all of the art in one place from yeah. the different companies. So like I was saying, this is Arxis. We've got Grand Blue over here. section over here. Yeah. I mean, you look at the old school art, right? Yeah. And it's so <laughs> iconic. Polygons have come a long yeah. way. So, like, a little bit. Yeah. Right? But it's cool to see the evolution from here. Literally, as we move down, yeah. you start seeing the refinement and the character design. This is the one I played a lot. I played Take a lot. Three, yeah. I didn't know what I was doing, but I played that a lot. <laughs> well, this is the thing. I went yeah. to Blockbuster to rent the game. Uh, this is so iconic, right? Yeah. And I think Evo has grown to such a large, you know, event that yeah. people are stoked to kind of celebrate the adjacent stuff, like the yeah. creativity as well, yeah. rather than just the, the gameplay itself. It might be the first instance of some people are exposed to it. Yeah, no, you're right. And it's so funny, Tekken 2, for some reason, like, this one's... Like, I was, I was, like, not even born yet. <laughs> <laughs> it came out, but uh, I swear this right here is so iconic to me. I, I can, I like as I looked over here, I immediately saw the Tekken 2, and it's like the Hachi in the clouds. Just funny, because like I will always remember like the Tekken 2 cover. Like, it just, it just like sticks out. Plus, I mean, it's unmistakable, like that hairstyle. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Come on, it's perfect. Dude, that's something else about FGC. Like, the, the, the Developers are so good at working with the community. Oh yeah, they're they're active on social media too. Yes, they're everywhere. Yeah, like the community vibe of the FGC is so good. Yeah, I, I like I love it. I mean, this is largely a community event. You know, yeah. a community turns, but all the publishers are here. They're here to yeah. represent their games and talk to the community, and engage with the community. Yeah, good stuff. Really good. The back wall the corner here is all the classic arcade posters. I think the ones on the other side here are the ones that people are most excited about because it's really rare posters that people are always asking us to come up to us like, hey, are you guys selling this? I'm like, no, oh, not yeah. this stuff, not this stuff. Oh, okay. These are all old, like, promotional arcade posters. That's sick. And a lot of them are, were never, like, brought here, especially, like, this one. This is, like, Japanese. Yeah. Wolverine's my favorite X-Men. Yeah? Yeah. I know you're stoked for next weekend. What? What's that? I said it's, it's going to be fun. It's going to be yeah. cool. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's actually a limited edition holographic poster over here. It's kind of hard to see. Yeah. But this one is super rare for Marvel Capcom 2. Oh, yeah. How's the little camera? Look at that. Looks good. Is the foil? Like, the idea of Marvel is great. You know what? I bought it, and I could never get it to run on my computer. Uh, Street Fighter X Second. Oh. Yeah. The, oh, yeah, that was the game for Windows version. Yeah. It must have been a weird install I, or something. I could not get it to work. Any sort of, like, crossover type fighting game is so cool. Oh, yeah. 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 Rival schools as well. Little yeah, that's school. rarely seen. Like, Jack Dawkins like, SNK. This is super cool. Yeah, Project Justice. The rival schools on the Dreamcast is really good, too. Yeah. Doesn't get along well. We have full posters here for all. Another thing that I really like about the FGC as a whole and, and the developers, I feel like the culture in general in gaming has started to change, but FGC has kind of been like this for years, where they're, they're not dumb, <laughs> and they realize that working together brings up the genre as a whole. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. like, you have, like, crossover games, and different games are very supportive of one another, seemingly, at least, like, from my perspective. Every game is different. So, like, there's a lot of people that play more than one game, but, like, they also kind of have their niche. So, they know it's like, oh, just because somebody is playing, let's say, Street Fighter, doesn't mean they're not going to play Tekken. Yeah, there's a know? ton of crossover. We actually yeah. put out a study that, you know, most people are playing more than one game here. Yeah, yeah, see, that makes sense. And you know what else? I'll take it a step further. I bet if somebody, let's say, plays Street Fighter and Tekken and Guilty Gear, they're more likely to play whatever one game it was they're playing over the course of 
time because it, it stays fresh and they still keep going back to it. And you know, a lot of those publishers they talk about it publicly is they try to time their releases not to conflict with another one that yeah. come out so everyone can get their time to shine. Because you know, the genre, it has to exist as a whole. It's not right. just one game that carries the torch. Everyone has to kind of do their work. Yeah. That's it. That's, I think that's it also there. spreads to the spectator side. It's a really easy game to, to watch. Oh, yeah. And if you play, general, yeah. you can sit there in the audience and you can get the gist of what's yes. going on and who's winning and things like that. Some of the other games might be a little bit more difficult, yeah. like League or something yeah. like that, right? But with fighting games, you watch it and you immediately can grasp it's a life bar. exactly <laughs> it's the, what's going it's on. It's the best eSport. Hands yeah. down, like for, for Barry of Entry, like getting into it, it's hands down the best eSport. Obviously, like there's a lot of like League, for example, or, or like Counter Strike. Like, they're really cool, yeah. right? So, tons of support, all that stuff. But as far as like the best esport for like getting somebody who has no idea what's going on into it, far and away it's, it's just fighting against each other. Because you know, hit the guy in the face, health bar goes down, and that's all you need to know. Yeah. For, to, just to watch. Right? I think that's why we've seen the growth that we have over the past few years. You know, after COVID ended, a lot of people are coming out to their events for the first time. They're like, you know, yeah. I was watching this on Twitch. I wanted to see it in real life, and it's really grown a lot over the past few years, especially. Hey, thanks for showing us the art gallery. Yeah, thank you so much. This was amazing. Yeah, no, I'm glad you guys did it. So what do you want to see next? What do you think we should see next? So I mean, there's, there's the this is the publisher area. Ball. So they got Dragon Ball Sparking Zero here that comes out later this year. Yeah, I've, actually I played it. I'll say that's the fighting game that I probably played the most. Oh yeah? Yeah, I always come here and I'm like, I'll go to like a convention, I'll like buy stuff. And I'm like, I have no idea what to put this. <laughs> it's one of those you just buy it, you want, you want it, and then you get home and you're like, what do I, what I do? Yeah, with? yeah, exactly. You got to build a little shrine, man. I do. You have like a fighting game waifu or something? I don't. You don't, oh man. I you gotta don't. get one, man. It's Ken, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that, that's fair. We're business partners. Yeah, now. there you go. His, his business is struggling right now, man. I don't know if you play the story mode. Dude, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's Hobo You gotta help him out. You gotta help yeah, him out. Hobo Ken. I know you're playing in like a few hours, but man, you're gonna get you're gonna get at least a few people. <laughs> well, well, you didn't enter last year, right? No, I didn't. Oh, you're gonna get a few people. I mean, I I really wanted to like train and like, I was like, okay, I'm gonna enter and then I'm gonna train and do that. And I just, I ran out of time. There's like too many releases happening at the same time. And like, because like college football just came out. And yeah, it's yeah. Like, it's amazing. People just hang out. This is a Kadia gaming lounge. So people are just hanging out. They're doing meet and greets with top players. They're doing a lot of uh, beta pro sessions as well. So it okay. gives people a chance to play against like some of the top players. They might not be able to play against them in the tournament or something. Like that. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. They have a cool schedule throughout the weekend. Yeah. So this is okay. Okay. Yeah, you like arcade parts, you like. Uh, controllers, you like t-shirts and stuff like that. They have a bunch of merchant apparel over here. Uh, it's funny, I came here, I came here last year and the amount of people that were like, what are you doing here? <laughs> Dude, you were in the in the trenches of the arena oh, yeah. streaming. It was awesome. Yeah, I was like, hey, can I just like sit in the corner here? And they're like, sure, I guess. The only other part of the event is the tournament pit, but you're going there later. Yeah. That's where you're going to be battling everybody. Wait, how do I find out where I'm playing? Uh, on Start GG, it'll tell you what time in which pool, and then there's number markers out there. So if it's like, for example, pool 428, you just find it up there. You can see them. They're all on the, uh, pretty high up. You doing all right? Yeah. You want to give an intro to yourself, just in case anybody in chat doesn't know? Oh, yeah. Can they hear me? Yeah. Okay. My name is Mark Mann. I'm the director of business development for EVO. Uh, I've been going to every single EVO event. I like arcade sticks. I like sneakers. You can probably see that through the museum. But uh, I help put on the EVO events around the world. Really work heavy with EVO Japan and, of course, this event. So happy to showcase this stuff to you guys. And, of course, if he has any questions or if you guys have any questions, happy to answer it. I'm, I'm going to be hanging out with you guys for a few more minutes. But I know he's, he, he could tell he's focused on his term. He's trying to find out which pool he's in. I hope he did some research on who he's playing against or who he might be playing against. EVO sneaker with Nike was sick. I'm glad you guys like that. Your chat's very nice. No, they're good. They're good beats. I don't, I don't know what I did, but I got lucky. Uh, they're good beats. Yeah, most, most other people. You find out your pool? Uh, yes. I'm at D146. Okay, it's easy to find. You just look at the numbers at the top. When you get to the stations there, you'll see numbers at the very top. Like, you can't miss it. So you just find out. You'll see the 200s here. Hundreds will be on the left. You'll find it. Yeah. So once okay. you get there, uh, I'm going to be with you for a few more minutes. Anything you want to talk about or anything you want to see? Uh, Any questions about the event in general? What do you think I should go check out next? So if you have time, obviously play some of the game demos. People, they're giving people a chance to play them early. They got some cool swag as well. Tomorrow, uh, once we start doing the finals, uh, we have four finals tomorrow, four finals on Sunday. Uh, I think the, the one to really watch out for is Third Strike. Going to be super sick. After Third Strike, we have an anime watch party in the arena of Street Fighter 2, the animated movie. You can stream while you're in there. I think that'll be super dope. Wait, can I, can I restream the... Is it, is it streamed? It, no, it's not streamed. 
online. So people that are here are the only ones that can see it. They won't be able to watch it at home. However, people can go in there, take pictures, record, watch, go in there. I think it'll be a crazy experience because they've never had like a theatrical release of it. That's a good idea. I think it'll be fun. And you know, I don't know if you watch that movie. There's a bunch of parts of that movie that could be really interesting and funny. So I remember seeing it on uh, my dad accidentally. Whenever I was a kid, he accidentally paid for premium cable for one month. Oh, wow. I, I remember it like, vividly because my dad, I remember him calling the cable company and yelling at them. <laughs> He's like, I didn't pay for this. <laughs> but uh, we had like HBO or whatever, and I saw it on HBO. I think, I think that's what it was. I think cool. it was like, on well, HBO right. and it was like, I was like, oh, Street Fighter movie. Obviously, the oldest game here. There's going to be a bunch of sweaty old men on stage battling it out. The crowd gets hyped for that. Yeah. Big great. Yes. So the question is tomorrow, are we going to see more variety than Chun, Yun, and Ken? That's the question. A lot of people are hoping for some of the, the other more explosive characters but are less that are lesser used. Yeah. We'll see. But, I mean, that's a fun game to watch overall. Yeah. Evo has obviously a lot of history with it. Yeah. Please yeah. enjoy the rest of the event. Yes. Thanks, guys, for stopping by at Evo. But if you need anything, you guys know how to contact me. We'll help you guys out. But if you really need help for the camera positioning for Sunday, we got you. Hey, how's it going? Enjoy. Take care. Right, see you. Later, guys. Yeah, W Mark. Yeah, W Mark.